This is nothing but that sports talk. Will you have the game? My father was a huge fan, you know, back in the 70s when the Giants and the Cowboys suck. And, and it was, the Cowboys were terrible. And the Giants and Jets were terrible, excuse me. And, you know, he got to me at an early age. My mother's entire side of the family was Giant fans. So he got to me at an early age. So the thing, the thing, is, with, the thing is with the Cowboys, and um, I, 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 it always annoyed me to no end that guys like Phillip Rivers, Matt Ryan, Kirk Cousins always seem to escape the scrutiny that Tony Romo received. And that annoyed right. me. But but you're absolutely right. What they played if Prescott and Romo play anywhere else, they'd be seen as success stories in this league. But there is an additional sign of pressure with the Cowboys. It is like playing shortstop for the New York Yankees, particularly in the in the post Derek Jeter era. So that level of prestige has not been earned by this by has not been earned by this franchise. And I always have to laugh at the people who always say like the NFL's rigged because um, uh, I, I, I no I I I I laugh at this because I'm like. If the NFL were rigged, it would not have taken the Cowboys nearly 30 years to get back to the Super Bowl because anything Cowboys related, people watch and people watch. Of course. And, and so, so I'm like, I'm like, if the NFL were rigged, we would have had three Cowboy Patriot matchups because the hate watching alone would have set viewing records from now until Armageddon. And so well, you're telling me that the NFL is that. They like prefer certain but, results, I'm sure. But, but, but Fee could tell you. Fee could tell you, look, I'm a Knicks fan. I'm a Knicks fan. How long have I been struggling? 1973. I ain't going nowhere. I mean, but you, I'm weren't a Knicks fan. Ni- you weren't thought of in 1973. We weren't thought of in yeah. 1973. 100%. But I, you know when I became a Knicks fan? In 1992. Do I have to tell you about the 90s? I mean, the 90s, we were competitive. But do I have to tell you about the disappointment? If, if the reason I Michael should... I should I should be in Bellevue for still being a Knicks fan after going through the whole 90s and living through the 2000s. I should be clinically ah. in a hospital, right? Because <laughs> you, I, can't, I can't tell you, Rafika, you know this. I can't tell you how many guys I've known from that era who have given up on the Knicks. They are no longer a Knicks fan no more. They have done it. They, they, they said, no, I can't do it anymore. I've done 15, 20 years, but I am done. So the Rangers, I love our Rangers. Rangers always keep a competitive brand. 1994 is the last time he won, but they always keep a competitive brand. And one thing about the Rangers fan base is they're loyal. Rangers fans love the Rangers. They are coming. Whether they're 0 and 82 or 82 and 0, they're coming. They are a really, really great fan base. And I learned this years ago. Do you know that the New York Rangers is the hardest ticket in New York State to get? consecutive seats together and season ticket seats like the, the, those those the, the the guy all 75 people who have season tickets this year are going to be the same 75 people again that all have just just a number to throw out there because the rangers are loyal mm-hmm. the liberty have never won the 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 i'm not a mets fan but god bless the, the yankees we don't know how to we, we we could beat everybody in baseball except for somebody in houston and and then the giants and jets have been really piss poor the last couple of years including the giants go into the postseason this year. And if the Jets would even have half of a quarterback, they would have been in the postseason this year as well, too. So I I tell people sometimes, now I'm a Yankees fan and a Duke fan. There is no in between but the Yankees and Duke. The only fan base that likes the Yankees are Yankees fans. Everybody else in the stratosphere of the world hates the Yankees. As a baseball fan, just because the cap sells doesn't mean that we're liked. So trust me, and we, and we deal with here in New York. Trust me, Mets fans, oh my goodness, the things we have to hear from them from a franchise who hasn't won since 1986, but they depict us all the time. So with, with my Duke Blue Devils, Duke could win 12 games straight. And this year is different. Coach K's not there no more. John Shire's the coach. Young are building. It's a different program. Yeah, but I'm talking about the Duke days. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember Duke did lose to Virginia Tech early this week. Correct. And Derek Whitehead got hurt during that game, but we also know that this is a different transition. When you lose a a a, a Giacana like Coach K, that's gonna mm-hmm. take some time, even with yeah. good kids. The the, the program <laughs> is gonna get five star kids Jay regardless. Hmm? Look what's going on in Nova with Jay Wright. Right. Mm-hmm. That, that that that's a transition. You know, mm-hmm. but remember when North Carolina back in after Dean Smith these are transitions. So what I'm saying with with Coach with Duke, Duke would I tell you Duke would win 12, 15 games straight. Nobody would call me. Duke lose one game. 
one game in the regular season, I have people that I didn't even remember had my phone calling me. Yo, Duke lost. Duke lost. Duke lost. Yo, Duke. Yo, Duke. Duke. And I'd be like, bro, but we just won 15 games straight. You didn't even call me during eight in the row. You didn't call me during nine in the row. You didn't say, hey, yo, bro, you know, yo, I can't stand your team, but they're playing really good ball now. But the second they lost, somebody got a call. So I that's what I tell my guys. Do that last year when, when Duke had lost, to, had lost to North Carolina during the tournament. tournament. And then when when I talked about Kentucky getting taken out by St. Peter's, you was talking about how how your uncle called the fake we call your son to roast, he, roast the, you my, like that. Uh, uncle, and not even through blood. Uh, uncle through my, on my son's side, who's a big Kentucky fan, called my son <laughs> to tell my son to tell me that Duke lost because I don't have a high definition TV. I didn't see that they lost, so he had to make sure that the message got sent through my son. It gets sent to me to say Duke lost. I said <laughs> unbelievable, but but that's just the barometer of the team that I happen to choose to like, and that's what comes with the expectations of that team. And unfortunately, the Cowboys have that same expectation too. They they should actually absorb it because it's good to be always talked about, but you do have to deal with the disappointment and the melee when it doesn't work out. And it's just the, it's just unfortunate. Same thing with the Yankees. They can't be let, let, yeah, the, the Yankees can win 105 games. The Yankees can be the solidest team. If they lose in the postseason, whether Astros or not, it, it's it's a new world order. But it's 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 okay for the Mets to be mediocre. You know, what I'm saying? even though they're better now, and, th- and that's just the the barometer of sports. Certain teams are going to get a bigger anguish compared to other teams. Uh, they, 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 but. Yeah, they might not do that to the San Diego Chargers, but the Dallas Cowboys are going to get that kind of flag. You know, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And the unfortunate part is Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones views like uh, social media views and you know and whatnot. He views that as the ultimate currency. You'd think he'd want another Super Bowl title, considering he's yeah. getting. But it, but but you know, unfortunately for unfortunately for Cowboy fans everywhere, he only cares about if the team is talked about. He wants to play you know meaningful games in January, and this is why he stuck with Mike McCarthy, who, if I may, I always refer to as the rich man's Adam Gase, because um, I feel that he makes no adjustments at halftime. We saw, we saw that on, we saw that on Sunday, he played very well. And it's, all I want to say about the 49ers is look, Ryan Leaf could play quarterback for the current <laughs> team. And with that defense, they'd at least get oh, my goodness. And, and, and now we're entering an era where Brock, Anything but Mr. Relvin Purdy. By the way, do not play the drink every time Brock Purdy's draft position is mentioned during the postseason game. You will die. Um, I think that um, I think what Brock, I think Brock Purdy is starting to actively contribute in big games. And um, yeah. the, the purpose of a backup quarterback is simple in today's NFL. Simply put, do not be the reason your team lost. As long as you're the reason that your team, as long as you are not the reason your team is losing, you have a future in this league. And that's the, and that that's why that's why I said what was going on in Baltimore with uh, Tyler Huntley. Tyler Huntley was what I like to call the most inoffensive quarterback in the league today because you're not going to win a game because of Tyler Huntley, but the guy has never actively lost you a game so he is going to have a nice solid long career in this league i feel especially as a backup this is how this is look there are some extreme cases i mean look ryan fitzpatrick was ruining your favorite team's draft position since 2005 and you know do you want to talk about a bad drinking game play the harvard thing you know he was you know a rare exception but you know there are other guys i mean look look who carolina just hired frank reich he was a quality backup for nine seasons in buffalo and you know all you have to do, again, do not be the reason that your team loses the game. And Brock Purdy was not a reason for San Francisco to lose, and now he is actually contributing the game. So that is the base, best case scenario for that team. And look, talk about Dallas. Cooper Rush did it for the Cowboys this season. He was not. He he he. They, they, I don't think you could really credit and out uh, most of the Cowboy wins in that span to Cooper Rush. But at the same time. They were not losing games because of him. And I and look, you're absolutely right in the sense with Dallas, you know, and this is why I always had to laugh when people were like, uh, you know, Jerry's going to call Sean Payton. Jerry's going to call, you know, John Gruden to coach the team. And, you know, no, John, not. John Gruden and Sean Payton would back would 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 offer resistance. This is why.
It was a downright miracle that Bill Parcells lasted four seasons in Dallas. It's a miracle that things like that didn't blow up corner. And one of the greatest what if situations in the history of the NFL has to be, what if Romo was paired with uh, Bill Parcells and or Sean Payton longer? Instead, he was with mm. Wade Phillips and Jason Garrett, who Wade Phillips, you know, everyone talks about, you know, oh, Wade's such a nice guy or whatnot. Wade Phillips couldn't win, you couldn't win in the playoffs a loss. And he was the, and he was, you know, again, as you said, a yes man in this, in, in this organization. So as long as Jerry Jones keeps doing what he's doing, as long as he keeps, as long as he keeps managing for clicks, as long as he keeps managing for outrage, as long as he's simply satisfied with occupying eight of the 10 most watched television programs uh, at, at the end of the year, the Cowboys aren't going to win anything. And when he when he comes out at the end of the game and says, uh, you know, Mike McCarthy's job is safe. We're not going to change anything. <laughs> but Mopper also played his way into uh, redemption. It was like Groundhog Day, except this time it means six weeks with six more years with no Super Bowl. Yeah. And what will what can playoff. go wrong will go wrong. Yeah, and don't forget the last <laughs> and don't forget the last eleven playoff appearances. They can't even get to the NFC Championship game. Exactly. Exactly. And the th- and the thing is, too, that. oh, the thing and, the, and the kick up the score extra points. The other thing, the thing with Dallas is too, they can't lose. They can't lose in blowout fashion. They always have to do this thing. Every one of their losses has been close because they, they can't. They can't just get blown out. When you get blown out, it's like on Giants' perspective. You're like, like a Giants' perspective. Out there, you're like, oh, look, they were they were just simply the better team. They were, they were better than us. <laughs> <laughs> they lose the most spectacular fashion possible. They always lose like it always comes out to a single possession and whatnot every time with that team. So that and again, look again, Jones, six more years with no, with no Super Bowl, and that and that's the thing. You you see a glimmer of hope with this team. Stephen Jones apparently has the team's best interest in mind. Stephen Jones was the one who ripped the who yanked away the draft card that said we're drafting Johnny Menzel, and I think that was what 2014, and we're going to pick Zach Martin instead. So yeah, at least it, it appears to have victorious intentions in mind jerry the father on the other hand does not have the right thing as uh, as long as the cowboys are in the news as long as he i think i i think i, I think he um you know as long as he can make like cameos and like i think he was on entourage a few mm-hmm. back and as long as he, yes, can, he was as long as he can do things like that and you know ru- ru- and rub elbows with with, with with the with the celebrities have a different celebrity in his booth and, and and got people like you know uh chris christie people like not bradley cooper he, the, the, he's got some actors in his uh in his uh booth from time to time you know he always has a celebrity in there or whatnot as long as he can rub elbows with those folks he remains winning the cowboys franchise on the other hand does not yeah they really don't all right, well, not to make our NFL Sunday championship predictions, and I'm not even going to just break that matchup. I mean, matchup. And um, Ryan, I know you probably mentioned it earlier, but which Super Bowl matchup do you want to see after this Sunday? I, 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 I honestly, I really want to see Philadelphia versus Kansas City. I really want to um, – Cincinnati is the, the more complete, better team than Kansas City, especially since Kansas City – Cincinnati has a better defense than Kansas City. That's really what's the the – the glaring reasons. I mean, Patrick Mahomes and Joe Burrow are probably like right here, right now. And quarterbacks, Patrick Mahomes is clearly the best quarterback in football. But Joe Burrow is right there knocking on the door of, I'm right behind you, Mr. Mahomes. And and I'm not too far at all. Um, but um, I really want to see Philadelphia and Kansas City get in. Philadelphia definitely is complete for me for the NFC. Cincinnati, like I said, is better than Kansas City, and we also have to see how he's going to play, but we have to see how he plays off the high ankle sprain. I'm still going to go with my picks from seven weeks ago, which is Philadelphia and Kansas City in the Super Bowl. I said earlier I have Kansas City winning that just because I think – I don't know. I, I, I think through all this crazy thing, I just think this is going to be the year for Mahomes again to – to do his numbers again, you know, he had the Super Bowl year and then he had a Super Bowl loss. And then last year, there is a championship game. And I think that this year he'll, he'll be the breakthrough and what more of a great story if he does it based off this injury and so on and so forth. So that's what I'm, I'm, I'm predicting to see, even though, like I said, Cincinnati should actually win the game on Sunday, but um, I want to see Philadelphia and Kansas city. I'm, I'm more confident that Philadelphia will win. Um, That's no disrespect to the Niners. I think that, I think that this will be the best defense that the San Francisco 49ers will see all year and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And I think that they will be able to do some of the things that the Cowboys didn't do, which was to get this kid in a little bit of a trouble, 
They will hurry him. They had, they had they had 70 sacks in the regular season, third all time in NFL history. They had four guys with double digit sacks. They can attack the quarterback. Their linebackers make plays. They have Bradbury in the secondary with Slay Jr. Good safeties. This is going to be a real challenge for Bryce Purdy. We're going to see if Mr. Irrelevant can be relevant because this defense is different. And offensively, the Eagles can score points and move the football. Now, granted, the Niners have a really good defense, so it'll be a lot more difficult than what they did against the Giants and so on and so forth. But I just think that Philadelphia is slightly better. They're the better team. They have the better quarterback at this time with the good defense and everything else. Everything else, both teams are pretty much even to me, per se, even coaching-wise. But I think Jalen Hurts is the better quarterback. I think the Eagles are slightly, slightly better, and they'll win it. And hopefully Patrick Mahomes can save me on the other side. But remember on record, I'm saying this, Cincinnati's better than them. Exactly. Jeff Mingo Chetty? I'm really interested to see what San Francisco does because I feel that um... – I, I feel that, um, you know, in this day and age, the, the, NFL, the NFL is so interesting. The NFL is a league, the modern NFL, that is, is a league that's run by a god known as fantasy football. And this is how you have games where both sides are putting up 500 yards, putting up scores that make are- make teams of the old arena football league, rest in peace, blush right now. Because, I mean, look, the, 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 we're see- how many I, – I think I was, I think I was listening to um, – Funny, funnily enough, I was listening to uh, Bill Burr recently, and he was said he was watching some playoff games, and he said, uh, I'm not even going to try to imitate Bill, Bill Burr's voice, but he was like, he said something along the lines of like, when I was growing up, you know, no one, no one else ever said, did they leave too much time on the clock? Did they leave too much time on the clock? Because that's all, that's all you hear in this day and age, like when a team scores like, oh, did they leave them too much time? Too much time. <laughs> and, but we, and, we're, and we worship fantasy football to no end we have an entire channel dedicated to when a team gets in the red zone and don't get me wrong it's a godsend but it's, it's the eighth wonder of the world but at the same time you know it just show goes to show how much the nfl loves to coddle and baby the offense and occasionally you still but occasionally you still see you know a defensive team stand out you know gone are the days of you know the 70 Steelers and the 2000 Ravens out there who you know would, Tampa could, Bay 2002 yes you know yes, yes you know what I mean and, and, and but, but 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 you need but but every so often there is a um Every so often, there is a there is a team that rises up, and a few years ago, that was you know the Legion of Boom Seattle Seahawks when they and I always go I always think back to uh, the Super Bowl of the Meadowlands where you know everyone was hyping up the Denver Broncos packed to the gills with weaponry. They were and they team. got thrown by the Seattle Seahawks. I remember that they one. got blasted from this from the very first snap. They got yes. blasted, which went which went in the end zone, and you know they were that Denver team was built to survive in today's NFL. You know that worships fantasy football, but a solid defensive effort, defense still wins championships. A solid defense, hundred percent, still won the game. And the game, like everyone talks about, you know that that Chiefs Ram that Chiefs Rams games a few years back, Monday Night Football was originally scheduled for Mexico City. It was Stadio Azteca uh, field was it was in disarray, so they had to play the game in St. Louis. What won that 54-51 game? An interception. So I feel that defenses still win championships in today's league. I think that's the key for San Francisco. They have such a dominant defense out there. They have another one. They go from, you know, Navarro Bowman to Fred Warner out there over in the linebacking court. Oh, so, I mean, they're just they're yep. phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And, that, and, and, and now the most important factor of, of it all is they are they are equipped to win in today's offensive obsessed NFL. Why? Because cool. Brock Purdy is actively playing a role in victory. So I feel like now look, this is going to be a very formidable challenge in Philadelphia. They are a dangerous team. They will attack him. They will get in the backfield. They will look to put the hurt on him. But at the same time, if San Francisco does the same thing to Philadelphia's offense, I think it'd be can, very interesting. It, it will be a very interesting game. And, you know, you go to the other side in Kansas city, Cincinnati, that again, will be a fun one. And people keep saying, I keep people keep saying like, Ooh, Mahomes versus Burrow is the new Manning versus Brady. How do we know that? Because the AFC is packed to the brim with just magnificent yes. quarterbacks who are capable of winning, not just now, 
well, later because like I I, I felt I felt bad that Trevor Lawrence isn't going to be playing this weekend, and Trevor Lawrence really succeeded this year, really proved a lot of people wrong. Uh, you look elsewhere in that division; it's just packed to the brim with great quarterbacks. Uh, Lamar Jackson, I wish to God that man could stay healthy because we have not seen Lamar oh. at the height of his playoff powers, and it's just it's just going to stink too. I because. I never like to call guys whose careers were marred by injuries. I never like to call them busts. This is why guys to me, got guys to me like uh, Kajana Carter or Sam Bradford. They're not busts to me. Football's a violent game, and you shouldn't be criticized or torn apart. Uh, I guess pun intended. Uh, torn apart for uh, not staying healthy in a violent game. So right. I so. I, I really wish we would be able to see Lamar Jackson, a prime Lamar Jackson, partake in a playoff game. But you look elsewhere throughout the league. I mean, this is a weekend where we're not going to see Josh Allen play. <laughs> I mean, look, hey, talk about Justin this. Herbert. Yep, Justin Herbert's. Not, I mean, look, talk talk about talk about a cowboy factor. If Justin Herbert was the quarterback of the Cowboys, he'd be the one having memes made about. But of course, he plays in the safety of Buffalo. But that's another discussion for another day. Um, and Justin Herbert too. Um, even he, he, you're even seeing some quarterbacks who and another one, Tua Tagovailoa, who is a form, unfortunately, who knows how his career is going to pan out. Unfortunately, with you know the injuries and whatnot. But there's some there are other guys who are at the verge of the playoffs. There are some good quarterbacks who are watching the playoffs from home in the AFC. Guys like Kenny. Great. Who brought the Steelers to the inch of the playoffs? Yes, at just at who is just beginning to touch the cusp of his powers right now. You look at you, you look throughout that, and and you know it's just unfortunate that you know some of these guys are out there. So I think we're going to see a great game because nothing is guaranteed in the future of this NFL. I really would like to see a San Francisco, uh, Cincinnati, Cincinnati uh, San Francisco, Kansas City uh, matchup because you, you know why because. You know, San Francisco was, you know, 15 minutes away from winning that Super Bowl the first time around. I think that's going to really inspire them. But, you know, I can't go wrong with a 49er Bengals Super Bowl either. Justice for uh, Boomer Size and Sam White and whatnot and, the, and those 80s teams. Ken Anderson, too. Boomer! Mickey Woods, as a matter of fact, too. Is that I, think he was on, I think he was on at least one of those teams. So justice for those teams. But, um, you know, and, and at the same time, Philadelphia is going to be a very dangerous challenge. Either way, I think we're in for one very interesting Sunday. I think I think one almost could not have asked for a better four teams, at least from purely a uh, in, in terms of a purely greatness perspective. Like last year, I don't think anyone expected the Rams and the Niners to meet in the NFC title game. I don't think anyone envisioned the Bengals advancing so far and even beating Kansas City. But from the from 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 a, from a sta- from a standpoint of the best teams, I don't think you could have asked for a better four to represent each side this coming Sunday. You can't. You cannot. Right. Now we gotta calm down a little of our energy because today marks three years since the ending, one of the most emotional days you ever had in our time as sports fans. As Kobe Bryant passed away, January twenty six, two thousand. I mean, me and Ryan, we did it. In, that was like literally the last one, of the last in person episodes I've done before COVID struck the world. And obviously, Jeff Mago Teddy, since I didn't know you at the time, like, why don't you tell us a little bit about your backstory from when, how you reacted when Kobe Bryant passed away in 2020? I mean, it's it's really unfortunate what happened. I, and in this day and age, you know, we're so used to you know so many hoaxes on social media. It seems like every other day we, we're we're in, someone trends on social media because there's a death hoax going around about them. And that's exactly what Kobe Bryant's death felt like. And when it was real, it just you just beg that it wasn't real because Kobe Bryant changed the game in so many ways. And he rubbed some people the wrong way, but at the same time, Kobe Bryant defined the way basketball was played at the turn of the century. Kobe Bryant, you know, changed the course of basketball history on several occasions. And the thing about Kobe was, you know, he, he could be the nicest guy in the world to you, but on the court, you know, it was very almost uh, Jordan-esque the way he conducted himself in the sense that he was your, if you stood between him and two points or even three on occasion, you were you 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 were gonna come out on the wrong end of that. And when it happened, I think I think it was announced during the um I think it was announced during the uh, NFL Pro Bowl, as a matter of fact, and and you know look shows shows you how much in what much of us I'm in need of a social life and watching the NFL Pro Bowl. But at the same time, you know, it was really just heartbreaking to hear what happened and to not to not only pass away, but to do so when flying to his daughter's basketball game, as a matter of fact. And Gigi was meant to be one of the, uh, one, one, was meant to be one of the rising stars. And everyone, you know, who was remotely associated with the Bryant family, not least of which, of course, was future Liberty star, uh, Sabrina Ionescu, 
um, everyone believed that Gigi was destined for professional basketball greatness. And that was one of the ways Kobe Bryant left his impact on basketball long after his retirement. He played a controversial style for sure. You know, people, people said that, um, people said that, you know, he hogged the ball too much, but you know, he was greatness personified as a matter of fact. And, you know, he, he, he would, it's, 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 it, 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 it it's hard to fully grasp exactly what Kobe Bryant meant to the entire basketball world and to, and to, you know, our sport, our pop culture scene as a whole. And especially particularly during the, uh, during the turn of the century when he was, when he was accused of sexual assault, but the, th the, the thing was, and, and those, and, the, and, and, you know, that should be taken into consideration and, you know, it, and you don't want to speak to, to, about ill of the dead, ill of the dead by any stretch because Kobe did so much well. Kobe really put put his sport in the in the right direction, both on the floor and off. And those conversations can be had, but I think I, and I think I think there's there is a perfect amount of nuance to it. You can you can acknowledge what he did on all sides. You can't deny the good he did for his sport, both on and off the court. So rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. Rest in peace, Gianna Bryant. Rest in peace, those who perished with them in that helicopter crash in Calabasas. <laughs> Thoughts and prayers to the Bryant family at this time. Yeah, you know what? I remember when you was interviewing. I remember back when we was covering Liberty in two thousand during that two thousand twenty during that horrific season. We there were there were questions being asked to WNBA players about what Kobe Bryant meant to not to the WNBA. Like, what what do you mind hearing those conversations? I do recall that. I do recall a lot of players were asked about that. I believe um, uh, Sabrina, of course, was asked about it. Uh, Megan Walker, she, uh, re remember her? She was she was with the Liberty for a year. Came came by late during the Brandon Bubble season. She was asked for it too. And all the players had did have a did have a sense of reverence for Brian. And you know, you see a lot of uh, NBA players. I'm not going to call anyone out by name. That's in my position to do that. But you see a lot of players in the uh, NBA walk around with the you know the orange hoodie and whatnot, and they sit courtside, and you know they 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 sit there and what, whatnot some of it feels a tad performative and it's not and look they, they could they could be doing things behind the scenes it's not my place to do so it's not my place to call them out by any stretch of the imagination but where about kobe bryant's uh kobe bryant's uh work in the WNBA and for uh women's and girls you girls youth young girls basketball as a whole that was not performative on kobe bryant's part he truly had an invested stake in this game and he truly 100%. wanted he truly wanted to see things uh, better in the association. And to that end, I don't think the good, I don't think the good that Brian did for basketball of all kinds, both at the men's and women's level can't be denied. So. You, you know, what's so interesting that you, um, you said that too. And I always brought that point. Me and Rafiq um, said, you, you know, when I went to high school, when I was in high school, it's so crazy. It, um, people are polarized by somebody who's polarizing. And when I was in high school, I, I had an interesting way of like doing things that weren't cool or weren't, but because I was popular and I was cool and I played sport, if I said it and did it, a bunch of other people would do it. Sure. So it'd be like, if this one kid said, yo, we're going to tutoring session, such and such, man, true tutor. Yo, man, I got to go to tutoring. Yo, Ryan's going to tutoring? I'm going too. You know what I'm saying? Because people, it, it's sad, but it is that way. Unless you're a true leader where you can think with your own mind frame and you're not worried about what the next person is going to do, you're going to make your decisions for you collectively regardless. People are polarized by what everybody else is doing. So if 10 people are doing it, 10 people will join that way because those 10 people are doing it. And I strongly believe that Kobe Bryant was going to be the one to make women's basketball more polarizing than what it is. So we don't have half the men in the world saying girls can't play. I don't care because they can't dunk. I don't care because they can't do this. I don't care if, if Kobe would have still been alive and he's pushing the game like how he was with that. Everybody that loves Kobe and some of those people with those mind states would have changed because you know why? Because Kobe Bryant was doing it and he was on the start of getting all that together. Such, that's why he has such a big impact with his daughter as well, too. But there were other things that he was pushing for with the WNBA and the players that he could have made happen without a shadow of a doubt. And when he passed away, I think that stopped a lot of everything now. And there, the people that were were, 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 were changing that stigma, and Rafiq knows we've had guys on the show, we talk on and off the air, that, that have said the most blasphemous things about women 
playing basketball. But I, you know, it's always funny. I always say that. You're always going to say that until you have your, your own daughter and your daughter's playing women's sports. And then you're probably going to be looking at it a different way. Like, oh yeah, my son, my daughter plays volleyball. Nobody cares about volleyball. You see, like, it's just so, it's so ignorant, regardless of the sex, to depreciate an athlete, which some of the people that are saying that can't do what that person does on any form of a field. You know, if if you can't do what that young lady could do, don't say that what she's doing is not at a high level because she's not a man. That's ridiculous. I know some guys that try all day to dribble and can't dribble a damn basketball. I know some six foot guys that can't lay, that can't dunk the ball. You know, I know some guys that have been playing forever that can't make a free throw. But 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 because they can dunk and and like I said, that's a whole different thing. So I don't even want to go into that whole realms. But Kobe was going to be the one, I promise you, that would have he made the average the whole common guy engagement of women's like basketball. He really was. And you know what? What what I mean, I understand we're talking basketball, we'll talk about Kobe Bryant, but Jeff Bigger tell you, what are some of the, the best games you ever watched of Kobe Bryant during your oh, during my your, goodness. Your, your as a sports fan? Okay, I think the uh, I think the one game that always stood out to me was um game four of the 2000 finals um mm. lakers pacers and um, my, my grandfather grew up a, a huge uh, boston celtics fan and he he had a vested interest in uh you know larry bird coaching the pacers at the time and um you know so, so i i don't want to say i had any sort of like major rooting interest in that series but it would have been fun to see the pacers win especially with uh Reggie Miller and um, you know, and be, being a future being a future Maris alum, uh, Rick Smith's the Duncan Dutchman out there. And Indiana was Indiana is at the old Market Square Arena. Mm. Lakers led the series 2-1. And I want to say with about three or four, maybe two minutes left, um, Shaquille O'Neal fouls out of the game. And yep. two point game. And of course, Market Square is going absolutely crazy. And it looks like, you know they are going to be able to tie this series up against all odds and win two in a row. Kobe, I think, put in about, I want to say like eight or 10 consecutive points after that and more or less single-handedly sustained a run after that and guided LA to the win and a 3-1 series win. Indiana wins game five, but at that point, there was there, there was a point in no return. They, the, the Lakers were going to win that series. And that that stood out to me as one of the biggest games he's ever had. It was a true MVP performance. I was a little disappointed to see that some uh, that some people forgot about him. A lot of people, I, I call it recency bias. I see a lot of people gravitate towards uh, towards his finale, towards his exit against Utah that one time. But um, I, I, I think I, 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 cer- I certainly don't want to speak for Kobe. I, th- I think he wouldn't appreciate that game in particular because the Lakers were, what, 26 and 56 at the time. So it, it reminds me of that moment he had, too. I think it was on... Um, was on Kimmel one time. I don't really watch. I don't really watch Kimmel much, but um, or or or, or many of the late night hosts, majority of them. I, I, I believe I, that was the post where Kobe Bryant was asking, "Hey, where you gonna have a boy? Where you gonna have a boy?" And then Kobe was like, "Yo, I got this." I yeah, that. yeah. There, 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 there was one time he was he was injured, and the Lakers ended like a nine game losing streak, and Kimmel showed him a video of like the Lakers celebrating like they had just won the championship in the post game interview. And he just had the, a blank stare and not saying. He's pissed. Oh, yeah, he's furious. He's furious. And I always that kind of that kind of that almost won me over as a Brian. Uh, that, that that won me over. I was like, all right, this guy, this guy's cool. This guy knows that. This guy knows doing. I so I I couldn't help but become a fan after that. But I was I was always just kind of disappointed to see that his performance against the Pacers that one time kind of lay forgotten because I saw a lot of people talking about um, what he did against the uh, Magic and what he did against uh, Boston that this, that second time around. So I was kind of I was kind of disappointed to see not, uh, the, the, the performance against the Pacers lay a little bit forgotten. And I see a lot. I see, I see a lot of people too uh, talk about the Nets, but I'm from Jersey. I t- talk about his series against Nets. I'm from Jersey, so um, I, I so I, f- I feel there's some local bias in there. So uh, if there's one moment I think I ever defined Kobe's career was Game Four in uh, 2000. I mean, I'll blame you. I mean, well, Kobe Bryant had a lot of moments at the final. I mean, seriously, of course, it's a Pacers it's a series when it gets the Pacers. You saw it out in the Sixers. You saw it to Brooklyn, excuse me, I mean, New Jersey Nets. I mean, they play in Brooklyn now, but obviously it was back when they were playing in Jersey. They, and, they, well, we, 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 we all, well, we all know Kobe Bryant's age career, so I'm not even going to bother getting into it. With, but what I can tell you is he made an impact in the game of basketball. 
both on and off the court, even when an Oscar. Yeah, that's yep, right. The only person. <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, th- there's three things that stand out to me big time with Kobe games, and it's not even going to be the prototypical ones that guys say. I believe it was game six, Lakers, Sacramento Kings. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think this might have been about 2000 ish when the Kings were really good, too. We're talking about Chris Webber. We're talking about Pedro Stiakovic. We're talking about Hito Turkoglu. We're talking about Bobby Jackson. We're talking about Mike Bibby. We're talking about Vladi Divac. We're talking about, um, um, uh, oh, Jesus Christ. They were loaded. That Kings team was loaded. Okay. Jason and, huh? Jason Williams this time? J- um, no, Jason Williams wasn't on. They, they might have traded Jason Williams. He played oh. early with Weber, but remember, he wasn't on those teams that were making that playoff run. I believe Bobby. Mike Bibby and Bobby Jackson were, yeah, the, right, were, right. were the point guards on those basketball teams. And yeah. um, he, he, he had one game in game six, and Shaq didn't play that great, and it was in foul trouble. And boy, do you talk about carrying a team mm. at a young age? He, he was phenomenal in that game. He made every shot and play. To, to make them go. But the other one that really stands out to me, and I think this was the coming of age for Kobe Bryant, Game 7, Lakers, Portland Trailblazers. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, he was... You know, remember, the crossover played a lob to Shaq. I mean, but he that game, boy, he he that was the day he told him, Scotty, Scotty, all of y'all, y'all can't guard me, and I'm going to kill all of y'all. And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna stop this whole thing about Portland thinking that they're gonna be the team in the West. We're gonna be the team that's gonna win for the next couple of years. He was absolutely incredible in that. And to me, that was the the true coming out of age of Kobe Bryant. They went on to the finals and they flourished, and the rest has been history. But um he he's had so many moments where he's just been absolutely astronomical. Exactly. And you know what? For those of you that just started watching that to put that sports talk, if you want our entire thoughts on it on it from, from the day he actually died, you can go go back to my YouTube channel and check check out the two parter I did with Ryan Walker. We're like that's like literally the 10-minute version in the studio. And then well, obviously a couple days later I recorded one with my cousin Knox where he talked about about like he gave his backstory on how he watched Kobe Bryant dunk at the Barclay Center. See my DG right here? Hello. <laughs> take, your cam- take your second cameo. Don't work. Now, oh, nice to meet you. <laughs> wow, she's got no Kobe. Yes, she has. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, this is re- well. Jeff Megachetti, well, let's just get a little bit about your background first. Like, how do you yes. get to sports? Oh, so, wow. I mean, um, was this first? This is the first time Ryan spoke to you, and well, this is only the second time we've had conversations since we started Cover the Liberty. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I, it's like I tell, it's like I tell everyone, almost everyone I come in contact with. I, uh, I realized I was a lot better writing about the game than actually playing it. I played football for several years, as you mentioned, uh, with the, uh, with the, with the, with Maris, the Red Foxes. Um, but yeah, after a while, I realized, yeah, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm better, but better actually writing about the game. So I decided to focus on that full time during my latter stages of college, and it's just become a career since. And. Um, so I've I've covered several teams throughout the years because overall covered uh, Jets, Giants, uh, Army football, um, and 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 of course entering uh, entering year six of that this year. And I, I joke I joked around everyone I saw at the uh, John Paul Jones press conference. I was saying how now that Beck now that Beck Allen's gone, I'm the longest uh, seafoam branded presence here. So when's my name going up in the rafters? But um, <laughs> but um. No, that's basically what I've done. Um, I currently write for uh, several sites in the uh, Fan Nation a- SI.com network, as well as several other sites, including Jets, Jets X Factor and uh, Baseline Sports NYC. And you can follow me on sure. Twitter at Jeff J Mags, G E O F F M A, uh, the letter J M A G S. So if you want to follow my my material, really appreciate the uh, further fellowship. And it was and it was great to be on, by the way, Rafiq. Thank you. And good to be on this yeah, yeah, no, that, that I know you were pa- you seem you seem like a very passionate New York sports guy. I mean, you uh, mentioned you followed the New York Liberty for years. I mean, I I mean I've been kind of following Liberty since the, since two thousand six. I believe mean, I barely remember some of the I remember some of the players, but I don't remember all of them. All yeah, of those I mean, players who they lost to the Detroit Shock. Well, now that Dallas Wings, 
That's right. That's right. That's our, I mean, I got to make a stand. I mean, uh, if you watch my interview with Christina, I kind of had him thinking I just started getting into the WNBA based on what I, based on questions that I asked and certain responses that I gave to them with, with Christina and Arya, Arya Chubbers. They were the reason I got into covering the, the WNBA. Wait, at a time where Christina Williams' girl star sports TV was brand new and Ari wasn't working with Bleacher Report yet. No, yeah, Christina and Ari definitely know. They're, they're, they, I, I definitely preferred them. I, they, I, influ- I, they were positive influence to my life in, in a certain way. Sure. They, I'm sure, I'm, hey, they've been a positive influence to uh, countless, I'm sure. Uh, I, 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 I always uh, I have a bit of a recurring gag with uh, Ari. I, 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 call, I call Ari the... Uh, the walking flexible schedule because um, if Ari mm-hmm. Chambers is at a game, you know it means something for the league. You know it's huge for the association. So I like to call. Her, oh, bless you. Um, I like to call her the uh, walking flexible schedule. So she's definitely an influence on me. But um, yeah, I started coming to Liberty first year at um, uh, Westchester County Center, and mm-hmm. I've been uh, been been attached to them ever since. So. Uh, Looking forward to year six. Should be uh, should be one should be uh, the most fun one yet. Yeah, I know it was talking all the way up to Westchester County Center. To, I could only I mean I could only imagine. And I'm saying it's because I went there for a job fair once. <laughs> the travel is no joke. No, yeah, it is. You're right. I, I I will say um one thing I do miss about uh probably one thing I miss about uh, Westchester County Center is that the uh, the parking's free at the very least. So um yes, I miss that. I, I miss that. But um no, but but. I think I, th- I think it's I think it's on the that they um it's good to, it, it's good to see them back within uh, city limits for sure so um yes more power to them and I am uh, very much looking forward to this season I'm sure we will uh, talk before then yeah all right well we get to stay in the, well obviously we get to stay in the New York Knicks right now I mean Jeff Mega Teddy I want to get your thoughts on everything going on with the New York Knicks this year oh for sure um well first of all can I just say Jalen Brunson has been worth every penny and then some so far because the thing with Jalen Brunson is that um, it seemed like a very Knicks-esque move and when Jalen Brunson signed that massive contract there was one name that floated in my mind and it's going to give Knicks fans nightmares everywhere Jerome James it reminds oh, geez. oh my goodness <laughs> oh my goodness! Don't mess with James, please. Oh, Even though he won a ring with, he did win a ring with the, he did win a ring with the Miami Heat in 2012. But he was yeah, a third. Nah, he won. He won yeah, an onion ring. Would you stop it? Morrison, Adam Morrison won a couple rings with the Lakers in in in, in those two years. So the thing, the thing, what, why it reminded me of Jerome James so much is because um, at the time the Knicks bestowed a massive contract to a playoff hero. Uh, Jerome James doing so in Seattle at the time. They bestowed a massive contract to a playoff hero who never had the full-time responsibilities of being a top option, of being a guy you could rely on night after night. But Jalen Brunson has responded to the challenge and then some. He has thrust the Knicks into a crowded Eastern playoff picture, putting them at the cusp of the, excuse me, putting them at the cusp of the six of the of the six automatic playoff spots because the Knicks were another one they're like the Giants if the Knicks could host a play a play-in tournament game if they could host one of those games I think that that would have been a uh, that would have been a nice little bit as long as they didn't finish 10th that would have been a nice little accomplishment for them this year especially after the way things have gone this year but uh not only has Brunson been worth every penny but this year but Julius Randle has uh succeeded for the, for the most part and then some it didn't take long for Quentin Grimes to establish himself as the team's primary shooting guard after going through these long since exiled uh, Evan Fournier and Cam Reddish. Emmanuel quickly has established himself as a very reliable first man off the bench. So while the Knicks are, in, again, they're not sneaking into the Eastern Conference's penthouse, right now you have to figure that, that that's probably Boston or Milwaukee's to lose at this point in time. Uh, they're not going to make any noise, noise in the penthouse, but they are putting themselves through a good year. This year is a very solid stepping stone because like we were talking about before, there is always an increased number of scrutiny in New York. And this isn't like the 90s, early 2000s anymore. I only split 90s, early 2000s, but that's another discussion entirely. This isn't the 90s or early 2000s anymore in the sense that, you know, the name New York uh, means something. And it's not just because of the tax, because of the tax reasons anymore. There is an immense pressure of New York, amount of pressure on New York. And most people, you know, you wouldn't want to associate, you wouldn't want to place association with the James Dolan Knicks 
on your worst enemy. So I think at the same time too, what Jalen Brunson is doing down here, look, there are two things that there are two things that Nick that the Knicks in any free agency pitch moving forward should show to free agents. One, they should show the way outside of Madison Square Garden was when the Knicks beat the Atlanta Hawks in game two. If you thought and say, this is how crazy we went for win one game <laughs> just imagine one if win. You ever win a series this could be you this could be you that makes a difference that makes a change and i'd show them what jalen brunson has been able to do this season in terms of shooting in terms of in terms of scoring in terms of mere facilitation and taking care of the ball as well so i think this is a different team under jalen brunson who has succeeded yeah. who has succeed was responded to every challenge bestowed upon him and then some at least in the early going of his next career the first year of course of that four-year 104 million dollar contract yeah even though well even though there are talks of people say that he, we should have gotten donovan mitchell i mean he dropped 71 points against chicago bulls i mean we should have got donovan mitchell i mean ryan walker let me ask this one question do you think that do you think the Knicks should regret not getting donovan mitchell i mean they are two and one against the cavaliers this year it that is such I, I hate to answer that. It's, it's so tough because, you know, Donovan is a Westchester County, New York guy. But at the same time, um, they would have had to give up certain – I mean, R.J. Barrett wouldn't have been there. You know, there's been other guys that wouldn't have been there. Who knows how that would have taken an impact. I would be lying to say that I wouldn't want Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell and – um, let me pick him up. Donovan Mitchell and and um Brunson would have been phenomenal as a mm-hmm. backcourt. Phenomenal. Mm-hmm. But um it didn't work out. We do still have Brunson. And if they would have had to if they would have had to give up like three, four players and two draft picks, who knows if that would have necessarily, you know, panned out for us. Nevertheless, it didn't work out. And um, but like you said, Jalen Brunson's a breath of fresh air. And I'll tell you something, Jeff, boy, we almost didn't we almost were not going to be friends because you just brought up the fact that, uh, listen, God bless Zeke, Isaiah Thomas. I love him. South side of Chicago, Detroit Pistons. But boy, that had to be one of the most horrific decisions to give Jerome James almost $60 million for a, a whatever he did at Seattle for that one year. And it, it wasn't great enough for $60 million. But one whatever series, the case was. Well, one series, more. They played Sacramento that one. Here. And it was like, and but um no no you're and 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 every every Knicks decision has to be looked at with a payment of what I like to call a Knicks tax. And the Jets have one too. A Knicks tax is basically any move in the NBA that would be forgotten elsewhere. It it plays for it you ha, it gets forty times the amount of scrutiny in New York because the example I always bring up is the butt fumble with the Jets. If the butt fumble right. happens anywhere else in the NFL, maybe Cleveland, maybe Dallas. It's, it's not as big. It's forgotten yep. in two weeks. Yep. The butt fumble happens in I don't know Jacksonville. It's forgotten in two weeks, yep. but because it happens to the Jets, it it pays forty fold, and that's the same thing with the Knicks right now. The Knicks if if the Knicks gave up what Cleveland gave up for Donovan Mitchell services, which let's let's let us let us just say for argument's sake, the equivalent would have been three firsts, RJ Barrett, Emmanuel quickly, maybe trying trying to think of it, maybe Obi Toppin as well. Toppin, right? Mm-hmm. The, 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 everyone would have torn the Knicks apart. Oh, you gave up all that to finish fourth. Yep. That's what you gave up. That, that that that's so Knicks. That is so Knicks. They, they did it. They did it with Carmelo when Carmelo came here, and then yo, know, you guys gave up everything. But Carmelo did give us some consistent cards in years. They might not have went to the playoffs all the time, but we know he was going to put in twenty and change. But come on, guys, listen. Danilo Gallinari, Wilson mm-hmm. Chandler, Raymond Felton, mm-hmm. Timothy Mozgov, and we were, even though the Knicks eventually got Raymond Felton back, did give it. Correct. Him, so so but to back. But, you don't win in this city for losing. You don't win in the city for winning. So the, 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 it still would have been that microcosm, you know, and in hindsight, I'm just ha- happy it worked out the way it did. Jalen Brunson is a really good player. He really brought a breath of fresh air to the Knicks. 
Hopefully that could change it. I didn't have the Knicks being no more higher than a six seed. You know that already. That was also my thing. I thought there was going to be a seven to 11. They will not break into the top five, even with that. Nobody's going to catch up to Boston. I think the Knicks play this Boston Celtics tonight. Um, the, the Nobody's going to catch up to the Bucs. Remember, Middleton is not back. And once he completely does come back, I think he's just coming back and he gets into form. We're definitely not catching the Bucs. We won't catch the Sixers. We we who else is in our top five? Nets. We won't catch the Brooklyn Nets, even though there is a mathematical chance. But once Kevin Durant comes back, that all ends all that discussion of catching up to them anyway. Now, and you're going to be at the you're going to be at the game this Saturday for rivalry, during rivalry week. Yes, indeed. I'll be Brooklyn Nets and Knicks. Can't wait to discuss your experience in that game. <laughs> Not to mention Miami is starting to heat up. Oh. Miami's starting to play better. Atlanta just beat them the other day. Atlanta is on the lower echelon, but right there in those cuffs. You know what I'm saying? So t- Toronto is not even mathematically in the postseason, but they're still in that hunt. And to- we, we, we had no answers for Toronto this year. None. So this is, there are strides that they still need to make. It's better to see them doing what they're doing now. Jalen Brunson's a breath of fresh air. If Julius Randle wasn't stuck in the Eastern Conference with all these forwards, he would be an all-star. He should be an all-star. But the East is loaded with forwards, so I don't know how that might work out. But um, the, the Knicks are playing better. It was great to see the Quentin Grimes thing. Let's see where they go. You know, like I said, Feek, I would have loved to have Donovan Mitchell. Anybody is – you would be crazy to say you don't want a talent of Donovan Mitchell. But I I am not upset with how things went. And Jalen Brunson yeah, is a breath of fresh yeah, air. Pieces. And, 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 I, and I try to tell this guy who works in Canarsie as a security, and I told him, listen, Danny H is the reason why we couldn't get this guy. And they were 100%. Like, get Jalen Brunson during the play, recruiting them like they recruited for Kentucky to get Jalen Brunson. So and Ains tried to play us. Ains was trying to suck us dry. He knew what he was trying to do because he knew the Knicks would, would usually in the past jump on those type of gambles. But it's egregious. It is what it is. At the same time, Danny Ainge partially did the Knicks in favor. I'm going to tell you why. Um, I'll try to do it as quick as I can. I'm sorry if I'm. I'm sorry if I'm going on. I really do apologize. I don't want to. I But um, if the Knicks were to acquire uh, Donovan Mitchell, that would have immediately put them in win now mode. And then you have then let's say this this process doesn't work out. Like let's say let's say you get bring in Donovan Mitchell and you're still like fourth, fifth, or sixth in the Eastern Conference. And because bear in mind, again, you would have to give up a lot to get Donovan Mitchell. So you, so let's face it, you don't have R.J. Barrett if you have Mitchell. Nope. You don't have Emmanuel Quickly if you have nope. Mitchell. Obi Toppin, his, his status is a better conversation for another day. So let's leave it at that. So, so basically, if you get Donovan Mitchell, that immediately puts unwanted attention and pressure on a New York on a New York Knicks team where that's the last thing you need right now. The Knicks yep. are no shape, way, shape, or form ready to be quote unquote all in. They were in no shape, way, shape, or form nope. ready to do that. They're not ready to compete with Boston. They're not ready to compete with Milwaukee, at least in terms of standings prowess. So you put Donovan Mitchell, look, the Liberty paid their dues. They took, they took their loss. Correct. So there's a difference that they put themselves in a position where they were allowed to be impatient. The Knicks, on the other hand, no, you can't be impatient because you're basically because okay, sure you might you might you might steal the cover of the New York Post from the Nets a couple of times, but then we're back in Jerry Jones territory. You don't want to do that, yeah. and, and you're right back where you started in a couple of years, where you know suddenly, some suddenly one of them gets disgruntled, one of them you know wants to get the heck out of there. So as so so what Donovan Mitchell would have done was hit fast forward at a point where you could not do that. You hit fast forward. You're going to, you're going to miss a few plot points here and there. The Liberty were able to do that because they paid their dues. They took their lumps a little bit. So, so with with the, with the Knicks on the other hand, you would have put a a whole amount of unwanted pressure and unwanted expectations on there at a point they were no position to accept them. So Danny Ainge in hindsight did them a favor. You got a point. You got a point. Now, speaking, well, you mentioned NBA All-Star as dis, they just announced the NBA All-Star starters for this year's NBA All-Star game well, for the Eastern Conference. Giannis Antetokounmpo, KG, Kyrie, Donovan Mitchell, and Jason Tatum will represent the East side. Well, obviously, those are the players the Eastern Conference playing the All-Star game. While for the starters in the West, you got Zion Williamson, Nikola Jokic, Luka Doncic, LeBron James, Stephen Curry. So, was that surprising? 
oh yeah, and to end it up the conversation, they, they're going to have the, the, the captains for the teams, they're going to be picking the players at the game itself as opposed to weeks prior. So uh, what are your overall thoughts on the starters I just mentioned? I mean, that's, a, that's really not that's really not too shocking to me. All-star, all-star games are what I, I like to call an endangered species anyway because all-star games were fun in the sense that, um, you know, that was the one time you would get to see, say, Patrick Ewing play on the same team as Michael Jordan. You, you see that. And, this, and forgive me if I sound like an old man complaining about, you know, the era of super teams and whatnot. But nowadays, that's more commonplace than ever. Nowadays, you know, if you want to – now sometimes an All-Star game was the one time you got to see someone like uh, – like I like I I don't know Isaiah Thomas play uh, at times because that but nowadays games are more available than ever and and it, it's not it's not just the NBA All Star Game which is you know kind of an endangered species I mean look at look at look at the NFL look at the Pro Bowl we we we, we yeah. suffered with that for three years and it just got to the point where it just gets to the point where you know they're they're endangered species or redundant exercise and I think nothing talks about the decline of All Star Games more than during the uh, early stages of you know of you know uh, COVID nineteen restrictions, that the first things to go were all star games, and everyone in the world pretty much gave a huge resounding okay, like who cares? But um, that like no, no one cared when all star games were canceled. So at the at the same time, they're popularity contests. So I don't say I and 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 this is this is particular with the NBA as a matter of fact. All star games is all star games are about the events before them rather than the game itself. Yep. So, like, exactly. I think I, I I think that um I think everyone can, sure the dunk contest has probably lost a step or two from its heyday, but at the same time, you know, people look forward to that in the skills competition and the three point shootout more than they do the game itself. I personally prefer the uh, young stars. I miss I miss the days when it just used to be uh, you know rookies versus sophomores and we go from there. And uh, I've been advocating for years ever since I've been a WNBA writer. I kind of miss the. Uh, two ball competition where uh, I think uh, I think for the next one time it was like Alan Houston and uh, Rebecca Lobo did it was basically any team that had a NBA I I, 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 I am dating myself I remember that yes okay thank god thank god I remember and, it trust me and it and it, it, just, it just shows I'm a desperate need of a social life I think um oh my god the Katie Smith won it in Detroit one year I forget who she teamed up with but she did it with Bill Lambeer and it just was so I, I forget who the who the Pistons representative that year was but um I, and it was just so ironic because, you know, obviously he was coach and she was the CSA coach at Liberty later on. So I feel like that's something they should bring back. So um, oh, overall, to answer the question, Rafik, I'm not too, I'm not too surprised about those starters. And, you know, again, 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 my concern is who's going to gain as a reserve because oh, I believe that, that there's some players are getting more votes than what they deserve. Like, like I look at the fact that Derrick Rose is getting top ten results in the Eastern Conference, and oh my goodness, all respect, Rose. All, respect to Rose. all respect to Derrick Rose, but the guy has not stepped on the court in the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> and I get it; these All Star games, they're 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 events for the fans by the fans. So I'm not saying take away the fans' right to vote. I mean. I can't even talk. I love the NHL All-Star Game. We're the ones that put John Scott in the All-Star Game that one time. And he wasn't even on a team back then when it happened that that, that one time. When he, when he did but that. He, was, he was must-see TV, so they said. <laughs> <laughs> look, it, look, it got people talking about the NHL All-Star Game, didn't it? So, um... And 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 of course that that that, that that's what that's what matters at the end of the day. So um and and look look again all respect to Derek Rose, but um maybe again maybe you should step up. It's not unfortunately it's not 2008 anymore. So no. But um again I'm not uh, and 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 by the way to answer that question, should the Knicks have some representatives? Yes, of course they should. It should be you know Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle, not Derek Rose. I'm sorry. Yeah. But, what are your thoughts, Ryan? Oh no, they they got it right. All the all the believe it or not, with the the first the ten for both sides, five on five on both sides. Um, everything is right. You know, you do. Yeah. Of course, you want to see the king in there. Mm-hmm. You know, of course, you want to see. Um, Donovan Mitchell has definitely earned it. Um, you know, the yeah, um, you know, James Harden is the East, but James Harden is not the is the shooting guard he used to be in the past, even though he can play. And um, so everything with the East, Tatum is playing worldly. Everything on both sides are pretty much accurate. Now the next part is I want to see how they're going to do with the reserves because there's a lot of guys that definitely deserve it. As usual, on every year, there's going to be some guys that are left out. But this is going to be a very interesting process. I think especially in the Eastern Conference on who they pick for the reserves. 
it'd be very key. So it'd be cool. I don't know how many people want to go to Salt Lake City, Utah, but that's where it'll be. And whoever does get invited, there will be an All Star weekend. I, I would say at least we are not engagement for the All Star. They need some All Star weekend engagement. I mean, seriously. They I mean, I believe it was in Washington. They hosted an All Star weekend there. So yeah, let yeah, them do it. They're gonna have a good one. I will say at least we're no longer at the point. I think it, it wasn't too long ago where you know they would stuff the ballot box with uh, Yao Ming and Allen Iverson and they <laughs> were both hurt the entire year. And yeah. at least we're no longer at the point where an injured Yao Ming and Allen Iverson aren't, you know, the leading vote getters. So at, at least we've advanced. I, that was not too long ago, was it? Did yeah, I maybe it? about 10 or 12 years ago, right? Not, so, not, that, not that far <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much but, I, 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 I don't know. But the, 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 the Knicks should have at least one representative there. And at the, least and one. If they don't, it's an injustice. I'm sorry. If, it, if, if you can't make Randall go in, which he deserves as a forward, Jalen Brunson should find a way to be in some guard slot. But, you know, we'll see what the reserves and the coaches say about that. And if, if, if his presence on what he did to just change the Knicks a little bit in this short period of time doesn't get that on top of his – I mean, his numbers are, are flat out awesome. So – We'll see how they work with the reserves. Julius Randle's averaging a double double and had eighteen in a row. So I don't I don't see how you can ignore that. And look and, and look, I'm sure someone will do it. You know, because of course, like I said, Knicks tax. LOL, Knicks gets clicks. That's the one reason to keep that, That's that's the one reason to keep um, them out of the All Star game. And look, the Knicks, have the Knicks done themselves any favors in avoiding the LOL Knicks routine? No, they have not. No. Let's be fully honest on both sides, no. but. You have to give credit where it's due. So, um, it, but so, so it's it's good. It's going to be real disappointing if you know you know got if guys from uh, if if guys from teams below them you know is like uh, okay Trey Young deserves to be there. But, but you want you want an example of the Knicks tax? Look no further than Trey Young because the guy is four and eleven against the Knicks all time in the regular like some of the long lines of four and eleven against the Knicks all time in the regular season. But of course you know he goes into the Garden a couple times and has a few big games. That's all they talk about. And, you know, Knicks fans didn't help their own case with the whole yeah, uh, chanting about Trey Young, even when he wasn't there type of deal. So, Sucks, yeah, but 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 at the same time, you need to have at least one Knicks representative there, if only for the New York factor, by the way. So, Let's see. Let's see. And you got an interesting point. And um, well, that, well, I had to sneak in the all star news since it literally just happened right this minute as we record this episode. So. Yeah, I'm just going to wrap up the show with some games to watch. I mean, obviously, Ryan, you're going to be at the Knicks and Nets game this, this Saturday, which is part of the NBA Rivalry Week. And I like the fact that the NBA is doing a Rivalry Week to showcase some of the best rivalries he had in the NBA in our past time. And then also there's NFL Championship Sunday. And for, and for everything else, you can watch you can watch my weekly sports update I've started to do for Planting Not Bury. And thank you for reposting that, by the way, Ryan. Absolutely. You know, we family, bro. You know how we do with that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, yeah, we should have some more new WBA free agent news coming soon. I, soon, and I can't wait to see how that goes. So yeah, that'll wrap up this episode. Nothing but that sports talk. Thank you so much for stopping by, Jeff Bayo Chetty. It's been an honor. I, I finally have you on the show. I mean, I've had a bunch of other WBA reporters on it, but now you get your chance to shine. So should be here. You keep, you keep up the good work, man. You got some good stuff going on here. Pleasure to be there. We'll have to do it again. Ryan, a pleasure to meet you. Great talk. Great talking with each of you. Jeff has been awesome, man. God bless you, man. Yeah. Real you good. know what, Ryan? If you're going to go to some New York Liberty games this year, make sure you check out Jeff Bego Ochetti because he oh, yeah. in I... is writing some articles, being the guy that he is covering the New York Liberty. Don't worry. I'm going to send him a DM. We're going we're gonna to cross paths this summer. Yes, of indeed. Course. You know, summertime is my life for oh, basketball, yeah. per se. Oh yeah. I mean, well, remember we talked about basketball is all year year round sports. Remember we talked about all year round, <laughs> all year round, from middle school to high school to pros to the to the girls game. And don't forget to catch my appearance on the NBA Exchange with with Dexter Henry coming soon. So that's another thing you got to throw in there. Absolutely, crunch time. I, you know, my guys, we about to start that up real soon too. We got some things brewing with it too. So. This is a good time of the year, man. This is Super Bowl's coming up. Uh, baseball will be right around the corner. March Madness is coming right around the corner. You know, the WNBA season, everything is starting to brew up. And eventually we'll start getting some sunny weather. High school basketball will be coming to an end. But then they'll transition into the summer in AAU. So 
this is a this is a very good time. I'll let you know how Knicks Nets go on Saturday. I'm gonna be that guy. Three weeks to the Daytona 500. Woo! Catch you later. Roll the balls out there. Get you in the game.